By now we've seen that we can actually build web applications with some of the components we've already learned. But to do it right, we need to learn a few more pieces of our puzzle. Uh, the next piece, so to speak, is Java servlets. In this lesson, we're going to start by reviewing the components of an MVC-based web application. At the end, you'll also understand how Java servlets will fit into this structure, and we'll learn some important terms related to servlets. By now, you've seen this diagram a few times. Recall that our ultimate goal for building web applications is to get to something known as the MVC component model. M stands for model. These will be our plain old Java objects, which will model business logic. B stands for our view. This will be one or more JSPs, which handle the output, what the person's going to see in the browser when they run a web application. And C is the controller. A servlet will play the part of the controller. Servlets will be used to handle the request and determine which assets need to be called to implement the application. Other components that we've talked about that are part of the MVC component model, of course, on the client side, structure, style, and behavior, which are handled by HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are very important because it's these elements on the client side which either initiate the request or, more importantly for our server side work, they have to be part of the JSP or the view that we are going to create. Other components include the data. Many applications have to connect to some type of database and require to connect to the database through a data server. We've seen the order of study. We've talked about HTML. We learned to style client side using CSS. We've worked on Java POJOs with our Java Review section. And most recently, we learned how to build JSPs. And in those examples, we learned a lot about JSPs by letting the JSP act as both the controller and the view. As you can see, we are now moving into part five, which we're working on servlets. After that, we'll put it all together with the MVC design pattern. We'll connect to a database. And then we'll move back over and do more behavior on the client side with JavaScript. So as we move through servlets, you see we're basically crossing the halfway point in our study of building complete MVC component web applications. What is a servlet? Like a JSP, a servlet is a Java-based server-side web technology. Unlike a JSP, it's actually a, a Java class. In fact, it's a special class as part of the Java EE that may respond to requests. Servlets are generally used as the controller component in an MVC application, but they can be used to generate a view if desired. Much like we used the JSP, which normally works on the view, as the controller in our last set of examples. So here we see our MVC component model slightly changed to take out a JSP and include only a servlet to handle the controller and the view, much like we did last time with the JSP. Remember, this is just for learning servlets. The ultimate goal is to get to the MVC pattern, where the servlets act as the controller and JSPs will act as the view. As before, something on the client side will generate a request. When the request comes into the web server, a request object will be created. This request object will hold all the information that pertains to the request, such as who sent the request by their IP address, what their operating system or browser was, and any data that was part of the form that might have been used to generate the request. In addition, a response object is created at exactly the same time. The response object role is to hold the information pertaining to the response as the application is implemented, control, review, and model. The goal is to create that response and send it back. So you can think of the request object as the input object and response as the output object. Both the request and the response objects are available for our servlet, just like in the JSP. But unlike the JSP, we need to instantiate them. There is no persistence of data unless we do something special to keep it around. A new set of request and response objects are created with each new request. We'll end here. We saw how servlets fit into the MVC structure. We discussed our approach to learning how to write servlets. And we reviewed the request and response objects. In the next few videos, we'll see how these concepts are used to create a web application using a servlet as both the controller and the view. This 
has been a Piercy production.